You guys want to see something cool? Oh, if I can get the frisbee back off him. Come here, me. Come here. Meatball, come here. Give me the frisbee. Come here. Come here. Give me a frisbee. Come on. Ah, come here. Meatball. Look how ridiculously strong jawed this dog is. Ready? Completely off the ground. He doesn't care. Ugh. He's a heavy little lump. Get it, Roscoe. Whew. I'll make you dizzy. Huh, Bubba? Huh, come on. Roscoe. Roscoe. Bubba. You sit. Sit. Give me a paw. Go, boy. Good boy, buddy. Yeah. Good boy. Anyway. On to the focus of this video today. I inherited a push mower. I know that sounds a little weird, but uh, backstory on this is it was owned by my uncle who passed away about, uh, I think seven years ago now, something like that. And uh, this is the mower he's used as long as I can remember to cut his little grass. Uh, and it's an oldie, but a goodie. It's a Toro aluminum deck. And uh, I've always been into push mowers and any mowers, basically. As a little kid, I was always kind of drawn to this one because it was just so unique. Growing up, I dealt with the ones that had the little safety bars on them and all that. And this mower it predates any of the safety features that we're accustomed to today. Got a little Briggs and Stratton on it. And uh, he was hell-bent on keeping this mower going. He has never had a different mower in the 20... 28 years that I've known him I guess uh, he has all kind of parts over there for this thing and when my aunt passed away last month uh, I inherited this so I went over there and drug it out of where it's been hiding since he passed away so it hasn't run in at least seven years uh, and I don't think he was cutting the grass for a couple years before he passed away so it's probably hasn't run in, let's say 10 or thereabouts. Uh, still turns over fine. He had this thing down to a science. He knew it would take exactly two pulls and on the third pull, it would start every time after he drug it out to cut the grass and then would restart on one pull after it had been running. Um, but basically he's got enough parts over there to probably build five more of these things identical to this one. Uh, so reasons I do like this mower is an all aluminum deck, very solid deck, and it's never going to rot out. Your controls up here, you just have to push the thing and now the front wheel drive is engaged. You can let this thing go and it'll just drive across your yard, which uh, a lot of people would say is unsafe, but hey, if you're not an idiot, it's not going to be a problem. You've got a throttle up here. You can actually adjust your idle speed and stop it from up here. So. That's nice compared to today's uh, cheap mowers that you basically just throw away every two years. Ah, that cable's a little stiff on there. Uh, it's got a couple things like this knobs going. I can see it's cracked on there. It shouldn't be an issue. Uh, you can tell it's got some, some schmutz on it from setting and looks like it has an oil leak. I remember him telling me the last time I saw him cutting grass with it, I remember him telling me it was going through about a quarter oil per season now so it looks to me like it's just leaking it probably not even burning it it's a little three horsepower Briggs and Stratton on here and like I said I've got plenty of parts to choose from if we're gonna need some parts for it uh, but I remember being pretty proud of myself when I was younger because he told me the reason he liked this mower so much was the front wheel drive you know when you go to make a turn with it you just lift up the front end and set her down and she takes back off again but he liked that feature of it so i had actually gotten a newer mtd style push mower that had the same front wheel drive feature so being the smart little shit kid that i was i went over there and said oh check out my new mower yeah it's uh it's front wheel drive you should like it and of course it had the safety bar and you had to be walking with it to control the self-propel and all that and it's kind of funny, that mower, I bet you didn't last me five years. And here we are, probably 15, 
15 years later from when I got that mower and this one still should be fine to go and that mower got scrapped a long long time ago so it just tells you this old stuff's built to last you take care of it and it's uh gonna be around for my kids so let's uh let's see if we can't get this thing running So, I did forget to film it, but I put some fresh gas in the tank, and there was no gas in there, it was bone dry, uh, and pretty clean, maybe a little teeny bit of debris in there, but not, not anything that should affect the running. This particular style of carburetor has a pickup screen on the fuel pickup, so it can't suck anything up in there, it's a real fine mesh screen, so no choke on this model, it has an auto choke, no primer ball. Uh, I'm thinking that this is probably late 70s. I'm not certain on that. There's the uh, model number and serial number. So maybe somebody could tell me. So I could be wrong. I'm looking at the serial number and it's, it says 80 right off the bat. So maybe it's a 1980. But it's, uh, I know it's for sure older than me because it was old when I was little. Let me just check the oil here. Looks like we're right on the money with the oil nice and clear too. It's a good sign. So let's uh, set the throttle to start here and we will just give her a go. Place foot here when starting. You're not going to see that on a mower these days. Right, so we got nothing, not a pop, spit, sputter, nothing. Let's uh, take this air cleaner off, have a gander down inside the carburetor, see what we're working with here. These foam air filters will deteriorate when they're sitting a long time. All you gotta do is stick your thumb in there and see what she's like. Uh, this one's starting to get a little crunchy, but not, not bad enough to get sucked into the engine or anything. It's still pretty springy, it's just the exposed parts here that are kinda crusty. So, there's our spring-loaded choke mechanism here. What happens is that thing stays closed and then uh, as it demands more air, it just pulls that thing wide open. So the choke automatically goes off. Uh, I can see fuel in the intake down in there. I'm not sure if you guys can, but it's, it's wet down in there. It's shiny. So it is drawing it up into the intake. Uh, so. Maybe that means we don't have spark. I'm not sure. We'll uh, give it a shot of ether, and if it doesn't pop on that, then we know we probably don't have spark. <laughs> now you just need a little bit, you know, a little dab will do you at the ether. Don't want to go crazy or nothing. Yeah, a little dab will do you. If she don't pop on that, she ain't got spark. Yet. So without even having to yank that old spark plug out of there, I'll just grab another one here and we will pull this plug wire off, stick the new one in there. Uh, hard to do one handed. There, I got her. And uh, angle it back at itself if we can. Probably going to need two hands for this. Alright, so I just wire brushed this bolt right here, so that should be a nice good ground force. And then we just got to hold the plug up here with some well insulated pliers and just barely pull it off the surface there see if we can see an arc when we pull it <laughs> nothing but I can still smell that ether Whew. getting high over here so knowing the backstory of this engine uh, I know where it was stored it's been stored in kind of a semi outdoor with a roof over its head. So it's got exposed to the moisture for the last 10 years without being run. I'm betting our points got uh, corroded. 
because uh, engines this old have points underneath the flywheel here. So we're going to go ahead and remove this cover and we'll have to pull the flywheel off and get to the cover underneath that that covers up the points and probably just give those a quick sanding and uh, we'll have spark again. Before we uh, get any further on this thing, I'm going to give it uh, one good blow job here just to get some of the loose crap and cobwebs and cat fur and everything off of it. Uh, I can't stand working on all this. Oh, goodness, that's bad. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Should have done this outside. Poor choice of actions on my part. Look at the mess I got to clean up now. Ugh. But it actually blew off pretty good, so that's good. Blowjobs fix everything. Yeah, I'm happy I blew that stuff all off now because you have to take the dipstick out to uh, get this engine cover off and now all that dirt could fall down in there but it's pretty much gone so a lot less chance of getting some dirt in there. mechanism like that anymore. Cast aluminum too. There we go. So well, that's out of the way. We're gonna cover up our oil plug and uh, blow all this crap out of here now too. Take this grass screen cover off of here and then the flywheel bolt. And hopefully she just comes right off for us. That's a quarter inch, that's pretty small. But never too small to use an impact on. might you be? Seven eighths. Saying seven eighths. No, fifteen sixteenths. They're always fifteen sixteenths. Why am I second guessing myself? Yeah. Play a game called Is It Reverse or Is It? It is not reverse threaded.
So now we could get out a puller and set up a puller and everything and do this. We don't even need that. But we're just going to go ahead and do the old uh, pry up on her while tapping on it trick. Bet you that works. One tap. Didn't even hit it hard. I know everybody's going to tell me, oh, that's bad for the crank bearings. This motor is ancient. You're not going to hurt the crank bearings. I guarantee that's how he got this thing off in the past. I'm sure he's been into here before. I can see there's silicone around the base gasket. So he's definitely been in here before. Let's see what's behind door number one. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, pretty corroded looking points. Not sure if the camera will focus on something that small. But, uh, oh yeah, I just slid them across themselves and they made a big mark. So we'll get the uh, nail file and fix that up. Now, there are special files you can buy that are specifically made for filing points, but, uh, probably just go into your wife's vanity there and steal one of her emery boards. That's what I do. She doesn't even miss them. Just give them a quick sand. And we'll actually take the air compressor and give them a little blowy there. Make sure we get any of the crustiness off them. out any other debris that's laying in your points area here. Now at this point unfortunately there is no other option to test that you have spark again other than to put it all back together and pull it. Luckily, I was paying attention there. I was missing my flywheel or my yeah my flywheel key. It actually slid off and went down inside the points cover there. We got to fish that back out of there. Make sure you don't lose that guy. There we go. Now I'm not sure what this is about. I've never seen this on a Briggs engine, but it says do not use steel key in flywheel see instructions. I've never seen any other type of key in the sh crankshaft other than a steel one, so that's what's in there. That's what's been working. We're going to stick it back in there. To heck with the directions. Torqued. This key really was fitting kind of loose, so what I'll do is I'll actually stick the flywheel on first can visually line up the keyway here and we'll actually stick this keyway in now that the flywheel's on because it was wanting to fall out before. We'll just take that and kind of give it the old tappy tap tap. Actually, don't even need to worry about that because we're going to put this big washer on here with the crankshaft bolt nut it'll push that thing down in there just fine for us of course I can probably yeah just lift the flywheel up and she went down in there beautiful You can't use an impact for this because the impact will actually doesn't put out a lot of torque that wants to spin the whole motor. The, the function of an impact actually will just spin the nut. It hits it so quick and hammers it and you'll actually just end up breaking the crankshaft or the nut or something, not spinning this thing at all. So we'll take this quarter inch adapter off the impact and just throw it in the drill. She'll spin that right over and it might actually pop off. Stick that plug wire back on the actual plug. And we'll have to stick our dipstick back in the hole so we don't puke oil everywhere. 
like I already did. Now I can hear you at home going, but Matt, but Matt, you could have just left that other plug in there and see if it had spark before you, you know, fire it up all apart like this. I could, but that just takes all the fun out of it. So, it's going to be way more fun if it just starts up. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to lose any pieces or limbs, so we should be good. Huh. No dice. Maybe we don't have spark. Ooh, what do we got? Oh, we don't have the chuck turned all the way up. There she goes. She was trying. I heard a spit and sputter. She runs. I knew she would. So, before we uh, lose life or limb here, let's put this thing all back together and then we can go cut the grass. All right, put her all back together. Throttle in the start position. Foot <laughs> on the deck where it's supposed to be. Let's see if she starts back up easy enough. Oh, almost. This thing used to idle real nice and low for him. I took it too low. I took it to the stop position. That was my fault. Yep, yep. This cable's gonna need a little bit of oil, I think. Or just worked back and forth a few times. Let's see if we can't get a little bit of oil down in there. Let's get her back going and go mow some grass. Forget to see if the self propel works. Let's uh, flick that in right now, see if it works. Oh, yeah, she's driving. Okay, I made started to make a pass with it and very quickly shut it off because his yard is very different than my yard. Uh, he cut his pretty low, and that was fine. I cut mine pretty high. I like the nice, thick, luscious grass. That's just me. So I'm going to jack these wheels all up. And uh, I cut everything on three inches, so I don't know where the blade's at here. Okay, so just feeling underneath there. The blade cuts pretty much even with the bottom of the deck. So we can just measure from the bottom of the deck down to the concrete and uh, aim for three inches.
being able to throttle her down. That's a feature you only find on uh, high-end professional mowers these days. That's a thing of beauty right there. Safety who? We'll just let her ride off into the sunset. Well, I call that a job well done. Cuts the yard pretty nice. Probably could use to sharpen the blade, but good enough for now. This is just the uh, the weeds that cover the dirt in my backyard. So, a little bit more to do here, and then I go a little bit in the front, and we're done. So, anyway, if you like the video, guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, of course, you better subscribe. I got way better videos than this. So, I'll catch you on the next one. Later.